Hey everyone, today's a perfume video and we are going to be going down a niche rabbit hole. And for those of you who are fans of niche fragrances and tend to prefer niche perfumery, more complicated, a little bit less wearable, a little bit more bombastic or um, interesting or creative perfumery. For those of you who prefer um, niche, interesting, intellectually stimulating or challenging, fragrances uh, we are going to talk about two today that are that except i wouldn't call them challenging these are still rather approachable for niche market i would say that these two are going to be for the lovers of extremely opulent complicated deep and dark fragrances the perfume house I'm highlighting today is Tiziana Terenzi, and the fragrances are going to be Ludano Nero and Ecstasy. Those are the two that I have and the two that I will be talking about today. Tiziana Terenzi is an Italian perfume house. They specifically focus on fragrances and home fragrances such as candles. The founder of this fragrance house, I believe in 1968, was uh, Evelino Terenzi, an Italian um, wax maker who was commissioned by churches to make wax candles uh, and he was very very passionate about perfumery and established a little laboratory in Italy which of course grew into the perfume house that it is right now. The brand is run by his children so this is a family business. Uh, Tiziana is the daughter, she serves as a designer for the uh, fragrance house, and Paolo is the nose, Paolo Terenzi. And this is a dream team. Uh, they have composed a many very interesting, um, complicated, storytelling, beautiful scents that are here today and are still part of their collection. Specifically, the brand Tiziana Terenzi, not just general Terenzi brand, um, has come about in 2012. So it's been not that long uh, since they started producing fragrances, but they have a rather respectable lineup of over 80 perfumes in their line. So we are going to start with Ludano Nero, uh, or Nero. It's a 2014 release, so it's been out for quite a while. I have purchased this fragrance first time. Um, I believe in 2014 or 2015. So um, I did buy for the first time fairly close to its release. It is an ambery, woody, aromatic, um, unisex gorgeousness that definitely um, tells a story. There's a lot of character in it and the blend of notes is rather complicated. So for those of you who really like complex scents, this one will be a good find. The lovers of alcohol and tobacco will rejoice because those two beautiful, sophisticated notes are actually quite prominent in this particular scent. They tout uh, cognac as being one of the most prominent notes, I would agree. Not sure, cognac whiskey, it's definitely something that you would be drinking in a, in a leather armchair with a very tall back and studs. And uh, I'm imagining again here a vintage library with the uh, books and leather binding, beautiful dim lights, chandeliers. It's luxurious, it's opulent, it's um, full and very, very sophisticated and complex. It definitely has a lot of references to vintage perfumery and lots of references to vintage male perfumery. Um, I wouldn't say that this particular scent is definitely male. However, it is. it does have this masculine edge. We're talking about 30s, a woman in a smoking jacket, which is shocking for the time, uh, with a cigarette holder. Uh, the tobacco is very soft and slightly fruity. Um, it does hold its own very much so, which is probably why um, somebody who isn't into fragrances probably would assume that this perfume is geared towards males. Of course, I think particularly interesting is if you're quite a feminine female um, and you would combine your very soft femininity with that type of a vintage um, tobacco and cognac based scent with a woodsy musk base. 
I think the dichotomy of this, the oppositionality, is just extremely interesting and kind of sexy. Incense is a big part of this fragrance. There is a lot of smokiness, um, sexiness, as I said, the dark library or the um, underground club during the Prohibition times. People would smoke there for sure and they would drink there for sure. So the smokiness, the tobacco, all of that is really intertwining into this rebellious yet old school story. It's charming. Um, it's vintage. So you do get a lot of classically masculine brush strokes here, but the picture is not complete unless we mention a very honeyed quality of it, which softens it tremendously and makes it very, very wearable because uh, the notes are quite aggressive. They are, um, you know, they're, they're not the usual combination that you would see out and about, but the um, honeyed quality of it, the almost the crusted honey that's crusting on top when you're cracking a fresh jar of actual real honey, non-pasteurized honey. There's sh basically there's sugared honey that's crusted on top. That's, that's the honey that I'm talking about here. Amber rounds this scent out and makes it much more cozy and comfortable so that the charm of the thing where you are imagining this, this very vintage, opulent, old school, half dark library um, that you're in. So the amber is an equivalent of adding that comfortable plush throw just so that you're cozy, just so that your legs are very warm. But maybe there is a little, a little fire going alongside there, just very comfortable, very solitary experience, I would say. And definitely uh, I think if you are a male who is really looking for, for that interesting, um, masculine, yet soft and comfortable, very confident fragrance, I think that would be a great choice. If you are a female, um, I would say that you probably are going to enjoy it if you have a taste for niche fragrances and for very complicated scents and you like the vintage references and you like being in that slight cloud of, um, of uh, lords and ladies, or perhaps if you're someone who perceives themselves as a character on, on, on uh, Downton Abbey. There's softness, there's beauty, there's vintage Victorian references, all of it is there if you want a scent to pack a vintage punch. Ludano Nero is definitely a thing to look at. Not for everyone, definitely not for everyone, but for a select customer, it's rather magical. The incense have a certain ashiness and dryness to it, and the whole combination is rather pungent and gummy almost from the addition of that very, very rich amber. Comparatively, there are some fragrances out there currently that are representing this very um, this very style of perfumery. For example, the all famous Black of Gano by Nasamato is a, um, a close relative, I would say. There is Tom Ford Tobacco Oud that does a very similar thing and um, creates a very similar atmosphere, a very similar sensation. Um, Serge Lutens have has um, uh, a fragrance in their lineup that represents the same kind of vibe. I believe it's La Couche du Diable. So Tiziana Terenzi Ludana Nier isn't specifically um, unique in this regard because there are quite a lot of big name fragrances that are of a similar disposition. But I do find that Ludana Nier is exceptionally well balanced. It, it has a very good combination of uh, notes that support each other and do not appear to be very aggressive and do not appear to be too heavy. It, it doesn't drag you down to the point where you have a hard time breathing with it. I think Ludana Nero is a little bit smoother, um, a little cozier, a little bit less abrasive and sweeter, but still carries that enigma with it, still carries that uh, mystery, that romance, that imaginative approach to um, vintage references.
This one I would say definitely don't blind buy. Um, it's not for everyone. It's a, for a very, very specific audience. However, if you are the target audience for this fragrance, you are most likely going to be extremely impressed by the quality. Next on our list is Tiziana Terenzi Ecstasy. Um, this is a very, very impressive buy for me and a little bit more unique, I would say, than Ludana Neri is in its category. This is for those of you who love the nature. There is so much, um, so much natural grounding to this scent um, that that's really what is most impressive about it. And what I'm talking about is very much pine, pine, spruce, all kinds of ferns. There are so many perennials in here that specifically remind you of that very woody, very piney, um, a very clear idea of dark northern European forest. The fragrance is very evocative of actual moist black soil. Just that greenery, that very pungent greenery is certainly translated very well here. The whole composition is supported by amber and woods. There's lots of incense in here as well. Um, it is not at all as a front row um, as it is in Ludano Nero, but the greenery of it all, the forest of it all, is really what, um, what the point of the fragrance is. With the initial application, I do find that the scent um, is reminiscent of a little bit of a piney cleaner, if you, if you, if you know what I mean. With products for furniture, for leather furniture to shine it up, or for wood floors, sometimes there's a very piney scent. So upon first application, that's there. Um, however, it does develop in something that is a lot more natural um, and less synthetic. I personally purchased Ecstasy because it reminded me very, very much of uh, Verbancel. Uh, from Tom Ford. It's the most impressive scent out of their lineup and I was lusting and still am lusting after it. I haven't pulled the trigger on it, but um, Tiziana Terenzi Ecstasy is a fairly close cousin to it. It really does um, pull on the same heartstrings uh, of beautiful, quiet, green forest that is so dense that the sun rays aren't actually making through much and you're walking during the day in dim light because the trees are so dense that you just do not have a lot of sunshine penetrating um, the green cover. The interesting part about this fragrance is that it is rather heavy on rose, um, which in my mind shouldn't work, but it does. There is something slightly churchy about it, probably because I'm thinking about pine seating in very old churches and there's some incense mixed in in that as well. There is a little bit of a somberness to it, which is poetic and uh, imaginative and a little bit melancholic. It wears very long, as does Ludana Nero. I really have bypassed talking about the um, the sillage and the wear time because they, they are phenomenal. If you love super heavy, super dense fragrances that wear forever, these two are going to definitely do that for you. Ecstasy is perfectly unisex as well. Um, I would say that this is smack down in the middle, probably leaning towards masculine. If you like that as a woman, obviously it is exceptionally sexy when there is um, an opposition between masculine and feminine in the look. It's, it's a thing. It's a thing. And if you like that thing, this one would be right up your alley. Ecstasy is not a crowd pleaser. It isn't a fragrance that you should be gifting to someone unless you know the person's tastes very well. It isn't something that is necessarily an everyday scent, although of course it can be. Um, I, I see that any scent really can be your, your, perfume signature, your everyday scent. For me, this is not an everyday fragrance. For me, this is a very, um, very special occasion scent. And I need to feel dark, mysterious, and perhaps wear a masquerade mask and velvet to really go for either of those, but especially ecstasy. Pine and coniferous notes in combination with soil, stone, and supported by some florals, and uh, woods, obviously, create a, quite an enigmatic, mysterious feel 
um, you are lost in that dark, deep forest. Um, you will never find your way back and you've veered off the path. You will be meeting magical creatures any moment. There's something Wiccan about it. So with ecstasy, perhaps there's some druids you are about to encounter on your way through this magical enchanted forest. Wood nymphs are about to start appearing. There is a lot of intrigue there. It's a story from the dark ages full of mysteries and fairies full of magic with a little dark church far off towards the edge of the forest where you can find refuge and rescue yourself from the evil that comes down onto the forest with the nightfall. Again, not for everyone. There's a freshness to it um, just because pine is, is a very piercing note. It's a fresh note at its essence. So enter at your own risk. This magical forest may not be kind to you. If you are a lover of niche perfumery, if you are a lover of storytelling, gorgeous fragrances that are very challenging um, intellectually and olfactorily to carry, uh, you will really, really enjoy this. I think these are beautiful fragrances out of the two ecstasy I think is more of a masterpiece. Ladana Nero is a little bit more conventional. Um, however, it, it's only conventional if you smell a lot of fragrances, if you know about perfumery. For somebody who isn't um, into niche perfumery, it will not seem conventional at all. Um, but ecstasy for me is probably the more interesting choice and I think you would probably appreciate it if you appreciate that style of sense. So today we spoke about uh, Tiriana Terenzi fragrances. I had two, Ladana Nero and Ecstasy. Ecstasy is definitely a favorite of mine. I think an exceptional standout, something that's rather unique. Uh, Ludana Nero is a, a beautiful, uh, a beautiful, dense, uh, honeyed, tobacco and cognac scent that carries. It definitely carries and both of them have fantastic um, fantastic quality. The longevity and the sillage are huge. I would say really really dose that fragrance if you have it. Really dose it carefully because it can definitely turn into something rather heavy and suffocating especially down in Nero because it does not have the same uplifting um, notes that cut through the heaviness that ecstasy does. I hope it was interesting for you. Have you tried um, either Tiziana Terenzi fragrances, which ones, and what did you think of them? Or did you try the style of fragrances that I talked about today? Um, either the incense, alcohol, tobacco, woods uh, sort of situation, or the, um, the forest, piney, fresh and cool sort of situation. Do you have favorites in those categories? If so, write them down below and um, hopefully you have a good day. Stay safe, take care of yourselves, take care of other people around you and continue thriving or start thriving if you aren't yet. I wish you all the best with that. Bye-bye.